Hey guys, it's Courtney and I am here with Honeybee Stamps. Today we're going to be using the Fluttering By stamp set and you can see that I have my masks pre-cut using Simon's stamp masking paper. And I'm going to be framing in my sentiment with my stamped images. So I'm going to start by stamping out my sentiment and I am using my Mini Misty here for the in all of the stamping. <laughs> but I'm going to start by stamping out my sentiment with VersaFine Onyx Black Ink right there in the center of the card panel. And this is Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock. Then I'm gonna take my ruler as well as a pencil and just draw in very light pencil lines around the sentiment. And I'm not measuring here, you certainly can, but I'm kind of just eyeballing it so that I have an equal rectangle around the sentiment. And this will kind of just guide me as far as where my stamped images need to be. So I'm going to go ahead and place this back into my Misty and I'm going to use my masks as placement. So it took me a few minutes to kind of get these positioned the way I wanted them and all I'm really doing is framing this in. It's going to be basically one piece when everything is all said and done. Like I said, I did have to kind of play around with it as far as the placement goes to make sure that all the butterflies fit correctly. Some of them will overlap, which is why I do have the masks. And another reason why I cut out the masks, even if you don't overlap, this is a great way to get your placement right before you actually stamp your images. You can just line up those masks so that you have the placement right. So once I do have the placement the way I want them, then I can begin my stamping. So I'm going to take some of the butterflies that are on top of another, basically, or in front of another, and just line those up directly over where my mask is for that particular image. And I'm only stamping a couple at a time. And then I can close my misty door and remove all of those mask and masks and stamp the images out. Now I'm using blackout ink by Ink on 3 because it is a Copic safe ink. I'm going to be coloring these with Copics, but you can use any medium that you want. So I did stamp these twice just to get a bold black image. And I wanted all of these to be the same. Some of these stamps I've stamped before, some of them I haven't. So I wanted to make sure that I had a really bold black outline. So like I said, I went ahead and stamped these images out twice. And then I'm going to use those pre-cut masks to mask out the first three images that we stamped out. Next, I can move on to the next I guess the level <laughs> or next stage of stamping, I guess you could say. And I'm just gonna go ahead and line those masks or line those stamps up pretty much the way I had them. And I'm just going by memory here. You can always take a picture. Also, once you have those masks lined up, take a picture with your phone. And that way you have something to refer back to as far as your placement goes. But in this case, I'm kind of just going by memory. And I did kind of switch things up as I went along anyway. So lined the next three up, closed my misty door, stamped those again twice with that blackout ink by Ink on 3, and then masked those out. Now you can make this as full or as, as full as you want. So you can take those butterflies all the way to the edge of the paper. But in this case, we're actually going to be fussy cutting this one image because we're making one image with a lot of single images. So I'm going to go ahead and mask these out and then I am going to go on to the next layer and this will be the final, well, what was going to be <laughs> the final layer of stamping. So I lined the next two images up and like I said, once again, stamp these out twice with the blackout ink. Now, once I had my stamping done and I had removed all of my masks, I realized there was too much of a gap right there in the lower left-hand corner between the two butterflies. It was just too much of a gap and it kind of looked unfinished. So I don't usually save my masks. I encourage you to do so, but I don't, especially because most of the time I'm impatient and I rip them. But in this case, I needed to stamp one more butterfly in the lower left-hand corner. So yes, I did have to go through the garbage to get those masks back out because I didn't want to have to recut them. And then I just took another one of the images and stamped that there. You're not going to be able to see much of it. You're pretty much only going to see the bottom portion of the wings, but at least it fills in that gap nicely. So the way I positioned it, I positioned the top portion of the 
butterfly so that it would be behind the other two so you're not going to see the antenna or anything like that you're pretty much only going to see the wings to fill in that gap so once that was done i can go ahead and remove those remaining two masks and before you start your coloring you do want to make sure that you erase your pencil lines once you color over them you're not going to be able to get rid of them so i'm not going to show you all of the coloring for all the butterflies because I kept them pretty much the same but I will show you how I colored just one of the butterflies and just keep in mind that I used the same color combination for all of them so I'm going to start off with my purples here and I'm starting off with my lightest color not only to map out the darkest areas but also to get the paper a little saturated and this way your colors will blend a little bit easier going to go in with this very dark purple. It, V09 is very, very dark. This is what I refer to as the scary dark. And in order to get a lot of contrast, you want a scary dark color and a scary light color. And the reason why I call them scaries, it, scary dark is because it is pretty scary to put those down thinking that you're going to ruin your card. But trust me, if you use just a little bit of that really dark color, you're going to see a big difference in your coloring. So I blended that out with the V17, the V15, the V12, and then I'm going to finish off with the V01. So you'll notice that there's a huge difference between that V09, which is the darkest color, and the V01, which is the lightest color. But once this is done, you'll see that huge amount of contrast that you get. Now I'm just concentrating my darkest areas for all of the butterflies being closest to the butterfly's body, I guess you could say. So the center of the wings or the center of the butterfly anyway. And that'll be where I kind of just keep my darkest colors throughout the entire card. Next, I'm going to move on to some BG markers. And again, I'm going to start off with that lightest color just to get that paper saturated. And this will be a majority of the wings for this particular butterfly. Then I'm going to bring in the BG18, which isn't super dark. I just don't have one that's darker than this. So I just added a little bit of this to the base of the wings. And then I'll blend that out with the BG15, the BG13, BG11, and BG10. You can use as many colors as you want to blend. I typically use three or four depending on the size of the image or the size of the area that I'm coloring. But in this case, I did bring in five just because I, I did want to see that huge amount of contrast. So next, once the BGs were done, I'm going to move on to some RV markers. So I kept the BGs, the Vs, and the RVs throughout the whole card. And I am going to go ahead and add that to the tips of the wings, being careful to go around those little teardrop shapes that I've already colored in with the purple, especially with a lighter color. So you want to make sure that you think of the lightest color as being almost like a colorless blender. So if you accidentally touch a dark area with a super light color, you're going to drag that color out. You, you still will with a darker color, you just won't notice it as much. So you just want to be careful, especially when you're using those lighter colors, that you don't touch any of those darker areas and drag that color in areas that you don't want it to be. Also, when you finish off with the lightest color for that color combination that you're using for that particular area, you want to make sure that you're only putting that color on where it needs to go. So in this case, the very tip of the wings, I'll finish off with the RV000. And I want to make sure that I don't go too far down with that color because again, it's going to act as a colorless blender and I don't want all my colors to mush together. I just want them to blend nicely. So just keep that in mind, the lighter the color, the more it's going to act as a colorless blender. So again, finishing off with the RV000 just for the very tips of the wings. And then for the butterflies' bodies, I want these to look black or dark gray anyway. So I am going to start right off. You're not going to really fit a whole lot of colors in this particular area, and you could probably just color them in solid. But I am going to add just a little bit of shading. The butterfly's body would be round, so I'm keeping a center light source. Went in with my black marker first, and I'll blend that out a little bit with the C7 and the C5. So I went ahead and colored all of the butterflies pretty much the same way, just kind of switching up the patterns. And then once the coloring was done, I'm going to add a few white gel pen dots to these little dots within the butterfly's wings just to add a little bit of not really dimension, but so that it's not just a solid color. 
Then I am going to fussy cut this entire image. So like we, like I said, I made this one image and I'm going to fussy cut everything. Now you can use, you could probably use a scan and cut for this if you have one. And I just didn't want to be bothered with it. So I decided to fussy cut it. I am leaving a small white border as I go around. And you'll see that as I'm doing my fussy cutting, I'm trimming off any remaining cardstock. So I want to make my cardstock just a little bit larger than the image itself. That way I don't have to mess around with all of that excess cardstock kind of getting in my way as I'm doing my fussy cutting. You'll see that I'm turning the paper with my left hand and I'm keeping my scissors pretty much straight with my right hand, which is my dominant hand. And this way you'll have more of a smoother cut around those areas. Now you can always go back and fix any jagged areas that you have, especially around the little bo the bottoms of the butterfly's bodies and the antennae. Sometimes you get a little bit of a jagged edge and you can always go back and round those off once your cutting is done. But you can see all of my little scraps laying on my work surface there because I'm cutting them off as I go. And that will that will make your fussy cutting a lot easier. Just keep cutting off that excess cardstock as you go. So once the fussy cutting was done, I did have a few areas that I did have to kind of round the corners a little bit more rather than having those jagged edges. No matter what you do, when you get into intricate areas, you're probably going to have some of those areas you will have to fix up. So next we're going to assemble the card. I am taking a piece of black cardstock and this is cut just a little bit smaller than my card base. I'm going to go ahead and glue that down after dropping this on my work surface and <laughs> glue that down onto my card base, just leaving a very small white border. And then I'm going to line up the entire piece here with some foam tape, including all of the little areas that are kind of sticking out off to the sides. You want to make sure that you add some foam tape there too, because as you pull this in and out of an envelope, they can kind of crease if you don't have them stuck down. So I'm going to go ahead and line this up directly in the center of my card panel here. And then of course I need to add a whole lot of sparkle. And I was just going to add some sparkle to some certain areas, but decided that I think every butterfly needs the shimmer. <laughs> so I'm using a Nuvo Aqua Shimmer Pen to add sparkle to each one of these. Now, there wasn't a lot of sparkle coming out of my pen. So what I typically do is I kind of squeeze it off onto a scrap piece of paper because sometimes these pens can glob and you don't want them to glob on your paper because you'll never get the big glob of sparkle off and it will look a little crazy. So I always kind of dab that off on a scrap piece of paper off to the side before bringing that to my card panel. Finally, I am going to finish off the card with a few Nouveau glitter drops. And these are the, I think it's called White Blizzard, but I'll link it below. And I just added those kind of all around, especially in the corners around my butterflies. But that is it. That is the card for today. As always, I will leave all of the supplies listed in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for stopping by today and have a great day. Bye.